first, right? So our first really steamy hot day was the first day in full pads. Talk to our guys just about what that meant before today. Um, to come out here and have it be this hot was actually a blessing for all of us. Um, thought our guys really handled it well. Uh, came out of it pretty injury free. Um, uh, it's a work week that we've got behind us. We don't ever get practice six be, uh, again. So uh, everybody else in the country has got the same opportunity that we have. So uh, our guys maximized it. We'll take advantage of this afternoon with recovery. Uh, get over and watch the film. Uh, jump into some install. We'll take Sunday as a day day off. Uh, by NCAA rules, I got to give them a day. So we'll just use that as a recovery day. We can work with them a couple hours. Um, but really, really excited for the first week to be behind us and be where we're at. You had family out here today. Was that you know your family plus other coaches' family? You know, during the, during the week, they're not in school yet, but a lot of our kids are in you know different camps and whatnot. So I knew Saturday would be a lot of people out there. And, um, actually, it's worked out pretty nice. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been around before. I think the the grass field looks really good. Our guys were excited. It went so well out there yesterday. Um, being the first day in full pads, I wanted to stay back out there today, and that's what we did. And uh, yeah, it's always fun to have family around. Coach, a weekend here. At are you starting to get an idea of what the depth chart is going to look like? I think so. You know, we'll have a pretty pretty intense uh, personnel meeting uh, tomorrow. I love that catch. With my foot. I can't push that, baby. Um, yeah, I think we'll have a pretty good uh, idea, at least after six practices, especially some of the freshmen, you know, who we haven't seen before. But then there's so many guys. Kalon Tolson, Dre Barnes, Jake Hansen at the linebacker position alone, who we haven't seen before, right? Um, uh, guys that got out there and and and. and we're in the middle of practice today. Alex Paucho was out there. Uh, Bobo was out there. Jamal Woods and um, uh, there's one more guy. There was three guys that, oh, Kaylon Tolson had, had team reps today for the first time. So if everything goes well, they feel good out of it today, then they'll actually be allowed to practice uh, in a scrimmage situation on Monday. What's the uh, process for, we saw Mike Epstein out there doing indies. What's the process for him to get him back? And yeah, so he's actually cleared. He's 100% he's uh, on board. Um, we're doing a maintenance with him where he practices basically every other day. So this week they practice guys under his schedule practiced every, so practice Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We did a lot of uh, soft tissue recovery, so specific rehab, but also conditioning for them that's very position specific. Uh, we'll get tomorrow off and those guys should be allowed to scrimmage on Monday. What's maybe the thing you've been most pleased with here after the first full? Um, their attitude, their energy. Um, you know, there's, there's a coach, you're always gonna find things that you gotta improve, but I thought overall, just their, uh, attitude, their demeanor, uh, the way they're communicating. There's a lot of times where I'm standing back and I'm, I'm obviously watching what's going on, but I'm listening to our guys that aren't on the field, just how they're communicating and talking. It's been very positive. Do you feel like you accomplished what you wanted to when you set out for this first week of camp? This first week, we really wanted to get just, you know, nothing really game plan wise, just kind of executing Illinois football, offense, defense, best teams. Got all four phases of the kicking game installed again from the spring, um, offensively, defensively put in some wrinkles from where we were last spring and then today capped it off with a full day of pads. So uh, it's been a lot of fun in that regard. You guys looked a little tired out there. I mean, uh, being five days and the first day of pads. Yeah. Was it any uh, much of a transition going Well, it was actually six days, right? So we practiced Monday. So today was the sixth day. I knew it was going to be a drag. I scheduled it that way. Um, by NCAA rules, we couldn't have any pads on, full pads until today. Uh, tomorrow I'll have the day off, kind of regroup a little bit. The intention is to scrimmage Monday unless there's something dramatic happens that uh, I want to move it to Tuesday, but I think for the most part we'll stay on track and very, very happy with where they're at. We've seen some position switches obviously from the spring to that. Do you think you're about at a place where you're done or do you evaluate after the first week? I think we'll add maybe one to two more players on our roster that aren't here yet. Um, and, and uh, um, you know, there's always the opportunity. We'll, we'll kind of sit down and evaluate tomorrow on Sunday our current roster, see if there's some guys that maybe help us at other positions. Maybe it won't be as dramatic, but maybe we want to use Max Rosenthal at a certain spot at, at the Y or the U. Maybe we want to use Casey Washington as a certain level as a wide receiver, uh, Isaiah at a certain slot, um, get a little bit more position specific as we, we focus in. But there's some good competition. Competition brings the best out of people, and I think our guys have done a good job of that. Brandon, Brandon looks like the starting quarterback. So what, backing him up, what, what's the rotation look like? You know, everybody's competing. There isn't, there's a depth chart because we had to start the, start the week. Um, you know, BP's obviously got us a really good chance to be successful if we play the game tomorrow. Like I saw TP said the other day, we'd probably be the first guy in the game. But uh, I'm not really worried about depth chart, worried about execution. We're worried about how guys play. Um, uh, we'll worry about depth chart about 10 days out from the opener. When you mentioned maybe adding a couple guys to the roster, is that a freshman, a transfer, a walk-on, some combination of that? We'll wait and see. Uh, <laughs> the one thing that uh, I've been very happy with is to get our roster to 120, you know, to, you know, it's just quickly how things can change. Obviously, you know, uh, Jordan gets hurt, right? So now all of a sudden you're one, if we came in at 120, now we're down to 119. Um, 
We've had a couple guys get some injuries that might be out significant time, some, uh, especially some non-scholarship players, and all of a sudden that's going to take effect on your whole number. So we weren't at max 120, but that's where I want to get to. So what do you want to take away from just getting in pads? I know obviously it's hot and things like what guys are always excited to put them on and I guess get a little closer to you know, football. Yeah, I, I, I made the comment on Wednesday when we went to half pack, the day when we went full pads. Um, it shouldn't be, oh, we got full pads there. It should be, oh, we got full pads there, right? It's a, it's the outlook, it's the idea, the anticipation, and I think our guys have bought into that 100 times over. Um, the last four periods of practice today were probably the most intense. I uh, couldn't be more excited about just how they're handling that aspect, right? Like, it's full pads, it's a chance to play big boy football, and I think they really rose up to the challenge. Is there that same kind of anticipation for a scrimmage where it's, you know, maybe they're looking forward to moving yeah. on past the drills so and we'll, actually playing a little we'll bit? We'll be in the stadium, right? So I think that's got to add something. Part of uh, when we practice in the stadium is we want to get used to the stadium. So we'll be in the stadium for our scrimmage, and it'll be tackle football, right? So it'll be uh, no holes barred. It'll be scripted uh, some parts of it. Some of it will be unscripted where we're moving the ball, let the coordinators get used to calling plays. Uh, by NCAA rules, we only get two scrimmages before the opener, uh, so this first scrimmage is a big one. We've heard so much about talking and listening, and it seems like communication from you guys in the play. That's something you wanted to ramp up. Was it about the level that you know you wanted it at when you got here? I just what's your relationship? Yeah, you know what? One of the things I stressed these guys really was, I can't control anything of the past. I can just control what's in front of us. And communication for me in every part of my life for 51 years has been, when you have good communication, you usually have good results, right? When you have poor communication. Now it's up for, for chance, right? And if we can communicate effectively as a staff, we can effectively communicate with our players, and players can communicate to their coaches, and most importantly, if our players can communicate with each other, um, that's when you got something special. And I think the more talk we hear, right, uh, whether it be at the dinner table, whether it be in the locker room, whether it be in between meetings, whether it be out of practice, the more they're talking about football, the better chance we have. What does Sunday look like for the staff with no no practices? Is a lot of film. What's what's you know um, a lot of our guys are you know pretty faith based, so I'll give them an opportunity to be with their families in the morning, um, uh, do what they want to do, what they choose to do. Um, we won't bring the players over. I think the first thing is scheduled at 1:30, um, so it'll be a lot of uh, 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 just kind of review of today, get ourselves ready, and then post post meetings on Sunday at 4:30. Then we'll do a lot of work on Sunday night to get ready for Monday scrimmage. Which I assume that uh, Monday you're going to try to you know, emulate game situations. Yeah. Have you decided which coaches are going to be where? Who's in the box? Well, the, the, the scrimmage, field? this first scrimmage will be very, very similar to a practice. We're going to conduct it offense, defense, special teams. Um, we're going to do a mock game eight days out from the from the scrimmage. It'll be what, what you're kind of referring to, where the coaches are going to be in their respective game positions. Uh, our second scrimmage may have a little bit of that, but nothing comparable to like we got a pretty good one in in the spring game in that regards. You have Chase. officials. We do on Monday. Yep, Monday okay. and Tuesday, Monday and the next Monday. Chase and Sydney have really gotten all in on this nutrition stuff in the last several months. How impressive is it for you as a head coach to see two guys really put that much into their bodies and keep themselves healthy? Well, it's discipline, right? Um, I, I think those guys uh, are kind of extremists in a lot of different things, right? They they really are very well tuned in uh, to what their body is and, and how it um, then correlates to how they perform. So uh, I, I'm all for all of our guys. They take you know. Jade has done a tremendous job as our team nutritionist. Has really catered everybody's meals to what they uh, as specific as they can. Josh has really probably uh, has done as much change in that department than anything else since I've been here. About the way we have supported our student athletes in fueling, which is fu fu food and uh, hydration, and uh, they're definitely guys that take full advantage of it. We talked to George earlier this week about the diversity in the wide receiver room. We talked about the diversity in the running back room. What do you like about that wide receiver room? Have a different looks and different types well, there are new guys there, right? Like, so Casey Washington wasn't there in the spring. Uh, Jafar Armstrong wasn't there in the spring. Um, a variety of different guys kind of stepping into new roles. Isaiah Williams was there in the spring, but he was a quarterback, right? So really three guys that can kind of see factor into what we're doing. I thought Hightower's had it. Uh, Davion Campbell had a, a good day yesterday. Um, uh, 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 there's a couple newcomers, freshmen, that have, have stood out a little bit. So I, I'm excited about that group. And it's probably one of the groups that's changed dramatically you know, since, uh, since the spring game. I know you've always been a run first kind of offense in days of Wisconsin, but the offensive line you have, plus uh, Blake Jarosati and Jack Medanovich, you guys have a pretty good up front going as the camp starts and a lot of competition against I, I appreciate the question, um, but if you look statistically at what I did, right, I had good running backs that a lot of people refer to, but when we were successful, we ran the ball for 200 and threw the ball for 200. Can't get much more balanced than that, right? So like. The key for us is to be balanced. Uh, the key for us is to do what we have to do to win games. Uh, if it involves, you know, running for 300, we're going to try to run for 300. If it throws, balls thrown for 300, we'll throw for 300. We'll do what we take to win. But 
Um, my time at other places is behind me, right? Um, whether we want to view it as whatever we think it is or what it really was, uh, the fact is all I can worry about is what Illinois is. What do you think about the return of Blake to your side? Blake's been awesome. Uh, you know, took all the reps today at guard, and all of a sudden switched to, you know, center at uh, the Devo practice. Um, great communicator, highly intelligent, great motor, a uh, great fit for that program. Him and Bedovniak, I mean, both have been really impressive. Kevin yesterday talked like you guys have been here since December, January, but you've only had 19 or so practices. 20. Yeah. How much are you still learning about your guy? I mean, I know it's been a lot of yeah. months, but not a lot of on the field. Today is practice 21 that we've been together, right? So. Expectations are always, you know, uh, something that takes a while to learn, uh, and and I, I couldn't be more. Again, I think our coaches, right, just getting used to each other. Even though a lot of these guys have been around me, they're in different roles, they're in different uh, 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 situations, they're in uh, guys, you know, offensive coordinator, and defense coordinator, guys I've never worked with before. So uh, there's a lot of learning that the coaches have to take place, and then carries forward to me. Owen Carney and Isaiah Gay. Uh bring some similar things up to the field. Can we expect to see those guys on the field together or opposite each other, or are they playing the same position? No, they're, they're playing the both, uh, you know, in theory, outside linebacker, but they both play different roles. Um, we have uh, guys that play different uh, responsibilities in our scheme, uh, but those two guys are very, they're very different players, um, very, very unique skill sets in both of them. Um, uh, but they will be used, you know, one of the things that I think Kevin's done a really nice job with those guys is maximizing their strengths, minimizing their weaknesses, playing with extension, making them set the edge, the things that we really believe in on the perimeter. Looks like we saw, a, pic here, saw a picture of maybe the high school coaches Hall of Fame thing coming back up. Oh, yeah. What's that mean to you? Why is that important to you to maybe bring back? Well, the you know, from our opening press conference to where we are today, there's been nobody more important than our Illinois high school football players, coaches, programs. Um, I'm a former Illinois high school football player. Uh, so uh, I think Brett was actually one of the ones that brought it up. I know Pat Ryan, we use, we're going to uh, basically honor the reigning high school state champion every year in the, in the in, in Memorial here and, and hang it in a way that, you know, they can come back and see themselves, uh, you know, being honored. You know, they, it jumped out to me when um, I think it was Bedovniak made a comment that, you know, his last game when he played here, he thought it was his last game and now he gets to come back here and play uh, on his home field. I know Kendrick as well played one of his last games here, and when I started hearing that, that kind of turned it over in my mind. Um, uh, any way that we can outreach and, and, and uh, you know bolster our, uh, our appreciation for the high school coaches, that's what we'll do. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Brett.